Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I am going to talk about the Rail T7i Sub. And the reason I have a pair here is because I watched Sean's video at zero fidelity. You know, watching YouTube video, as I mentioned, can be dangerous to your wallet. So thanks to Sean's help, I reached out to Rail and Rail sent me a pair. So let's talk about it. All right, so before we start, I will answer your question first. Whether you should get these subs or not. If your goal is to enhance your musical listening experience, then yes. When I spoke to John at Rail, one of my first questions was, why should I buy Rail subs? Why not DIY it or buy cheaper ones from any popular brand? Now his answer resonated with me. They have been building subs for a long time and they have become expert at it. Each sub they built, it gets better and better. The 200th sub they built is better than the first 100 subs they built. Then after a certain point, let's say after the 300th sub, they are confident it is the best you can get for the price bracket. Now the reason why it makes sense to me is because it reminds me of the theory of the 10,000 hour rule. Now this was put forth by Malcolm Gladwell and it states that if you want to master a skill, you need to spend at least 10,000 hours on it. Now, one skill I got pretty good is actually photography because I spent many years improving. So I understood John when he explained to me. Now, before making this video, I went online and did some research as to what people think about rail subs. Overall, it is very positive and people say they are good. Of course, there will be some that don't agree. And in some sense, I can guess where they're coming from. After all, let me ask you, what is good? Next time when you see people telling you that their sub is amazing, ask them, why is their sub amazing? At the end of the day, what is good is different from one person to another. For some, good means the subs can shake the room. Okay, if that is the only thing you look for in a sub, then you don't need rails. If all you're looking for in a sub is to pressurize the room and feel the bass note pounding on your chest with each beat, sure, you don't need rails. You can just buy a 24 inch subwoofer and be done with. Now, for me, that is not enough. And I demand more from a sub. At $3,000 Canadian a pair, I demand excellence. So let's pause for five seconds here. And let me ask you, what does excellence mean in a subwoofer? First, it has to blend seamlessly with my speakers. I don't want to be able to hear it. It is there to enhance the musical experience and not be the experience. Yes, those subs need to disappear in my room. Second, it should not distort and have good control. You see, if a sub distorts, it is easy to localize it, and I don't want that. Third, it has to be fast enough to keep up with my main speakers. Many modern speakers are really fast, and I don't want the subs to drag them down. Fourth, the subs should add depth and expand the sound stage. Now, many people think that all subs do is add a bass extension. Nope, they also help extend your sound stage. Next, they should add detail, more weight, well, I call it meat on the bone, and bass extension to the music. I should hear more information. Now, some subs, when they play, they just overpowers everything. Sure, for some it is enjoyable, but once you experience a sub that is not monotone, you will quickly realize that you have been missing a lot. Finally, I want my subs to look beautiful. I firmly believe that our musical experience is greatly enhanced when our setup is aesthetically pleasing. Now, so if everything I just mentioned matches what you're looking for in a sub, then yeah, take a look at the rails. Now, you're gonna ask, what about SVS 3000, Thomas? I'm sure I'm gonna get asked this question. Sorry, I don't know because I don't like to speculate on how the SVS will perform against the T7i. After all, I never A-B test them. It makes no sense for me to criticize a product or compare any product unless I've heard it. It's like saying, I bet I can cook better than you. I've never tried your cooking, but I know I am better. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So having said that, although I don't know how the rail compares to all the thousands of subs out there, what I do know is because I have it here is that if you want to enhance, elevate your li musical listening experience, these rails can do it. So something to think about, what gear in your stereo system has the biggest impact? 
speakers, right? Well, subwoofers are speakers. Sure, you're not changing speakers, but adding speakers. However, it will have a big impact on your system. I would argue more than changing DACs, upgrading cables, and so forth. So for this uh, review, I had invited over 10 audiophiles to experience these subs. All of them were very impressed with how uh, well they, they blend with my main speakers or any speakers. Now, if you're wondering, do I still need subs if my floor standing speakers can already go pretty low? Now, after pairing with over 10 plus speakers, the answer is yes. Now, for example, recently I made a video on the Klipsch RP8000F and I mentioned bass is pretty decent with these speakers. My friend Frederick, who owns the stand mount version, the Klipsch RP600M, dropped by to listen to the RP8000F and he mentioned that if he never heard the subs with the RP8000F, he would have thought the bass on the RP8000F is more than enough. After he heard it with the rail, he can't go back. And it is pretty much the same experience with all my other speakers. I cannot go back. Sure, with stand mount, it will be more apparent with the presence of the subs, but the floor standing speakers will also benefit. Now, I cannot stress enough how well they integrate with my speakers. I remember when I paired it with the PMC DB1 Go small speakers, Mr. Kanta, well, okay, you know, I give my friend's nickname, well, Mr. Kanta, because he owns a pair of Kanta. Now, Mr. Kanta, he found it amusing that the bass appears out of thin air because he can't localize where the subs are. Now, Mr. Kwa was able to tell the richness of the bass within seconds. He noticed the dual sub fills up the room evenly and effortlessly. One good thing about having dual sub is that it's very easy to set up. Another big advantage these uh, rail sub has over other subs is that it has a high level line out. What it means is that you can connect these uh, subs directly to your power amp. So whatever signal is sending from the power amp to the speakers, you're getting it same with these subwoofers. The whole idea is that it will improve sound quality. What I noticed is that the difference is subtle, but for people who have, let's say, uh, integrated tube amps with no pre-out, no sub-out, I mean, this is your only solution. So for people who ask me, Thomas, you know, what's the sub you recommend me? I always ask, do you have a pre-out or sub-out in your system? If not, then you have no choice but to go with uh, subs that have that high level out line output and rails have them. Now, obviously nothing is perfect. So let's talk about the areas of opportunity. First, I would say that with higher end Focal Canter, for example, although the subs can keep up and add richness to the sound, I did wish the subs can dig a bit lower. So I would say if you have speakers that are over $10,000 and that are pretty good with bass, on top of these T7i, maybe also consider their higher end model. The second area of opportunity may not be an issue depending on how you enjoy your movies. Now, before I got into two channel stereo, I was actually into home theater. So over the years, I've gone through maybe 10 plus subs and having owned all the big brands, I found what I was looking for at the time for home theater use is very different. Now, at that time, I remember I wanted subs that fart, that distort, that shake. Now, every time when there's explosions, for example, I wanted to see the picture frames on my wall shake. I wanted to hear my subs losing control. The more it farts, the better it is. Rails are not like that. They don't fart, they don't distort. As such, the experience is different. These rails will have no problem giving you power, but control refined power. So unlike listening to music with explosions, for example, you will feel the subs. Now, I remember watching the movie Thor Ragnarok. Towards the end of the movie, when the Asgardians were trying to escape with the spaceship, when the thrusters on the ship fired, I mean, I felt it big time. So power is not an issue, just that it doesn't lose control. So it depends on you. Now, when there's musical passages in the movie, now that, it sounds glorious. Now, having said that, I would say if you're 80% into movies and 20% into music, rails, they do make subwoofers that are for home theater. So check those out also on their website. All right, so I'm gonna end the video at this point. It's gonna be a little bit different uh, because I'm gonna finish with a few short clips I recorded with a few audio files regarding how they felt about the rails. Now, the last one is with Mr. Kataris and Mr. Multisystem. Now, we discussed the song Lust for Life from Lana Del Rey. 
Well, you see, I, I get together with my friends occasionally and we will evaluate gear together. So instead of writing notes, sometimes I would just record our conversation. Now in this instance, I figure I would just share the recording and let you see what happens behind the scene. I think this will be cool. All right, so before we transition into those clips, just want to say thank you for watching and remember to subscribe. See you next time. Yeah, I found the rail to be uh, quite good on the pacing. They, they were also very solid on, um, on how um, they, they're able to build that platform for the zoos to stand on. Mm -hmm. it's, they're not just like boomy, but also they're very, very nuanced in their control. So from there, they're able to follow the pace of the zoo mm -hmm. in order to, um, yeah, to synchronize and completely disappear. Yep. Well, I thought the rails really filled out the sound, especially for the Omegas. Mm -hmm. um, w without them, they were just a touch thin. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's definitely needed the subs and and the rails they they kept up well. They didn't uh, um, they didn't stand out either. You mm -hmm. know, we didn't really hear them, which I mean that's the point of subs. But yeah. um, we we could definitely feel some more tonal richness when when we had the subs on. The interesting thing with that particular track is it's indicative of a recording technique that does emphasize a more bass heavy and mid-range presence in the mix. She, she's a very good singer and has a lovely voice. I was sitting listening to the playback and was impressed by one particular element. It's part of the mix for this song mm -hmm. has a subsonic element in it to, to give gravitas to the mix. Mm -hmm. So the playback is unnaturally boomy on the wrong system mm -hmm. it should play back with a very airy atmospheric vocal range because of all the reverb mm -hmm. processing that's done to her voice and it does mm -hmm. the clarity there is it's present it's pleasant the test was how boomy and how bordering on distortion would those subsonics play back in the system would it be overpowering would it be rattling you're not looking for rattling Mm -hmm. It should be a wash, almost like a pulsing wave of bass without being bass heavy. Mm -hmm. So you feel a certain displacement of air, mm -hmm. like a whoosh, but you shouldn't feel the pounding mm -hmm. of that subsonic pulsation coming at you. So that's what they intended in the recording. Mm -hmm. When you play it back on a typical, what, what I've noticed, and I have a bit of fun sometimes going to, to some hi-fi shops and playing back on their assembled systems, various brands, mm -hmm. and they always have a subwoofer that's too loud because it's fun to thump and play back things in a very aggressive way in a mix when you're watching something. For music, not so much. A musical subwoofer, which I think we agree these rels are, when yes. paired with these focales, yeah. gave a lovely rounded presence of the subsonics mm -hmm. without assaulting you with their pulsation. Mm -hmm. I think the only disappointment some people might have with the RELs is because they're refined and controlled, they don't have, you know, like the low, like I, I haven't listened to an SVS uh, sub, uh, but I imagine those are like, they're the wild party animal sub that will pump out, Close you know, power. you know, if you want the room to shake, the, that's the one to get. If you want the room to shake, I'm sure the, the rails, the bigger do. ones, oh, yes. could the, do sure. that, but that's not where their strength is. Exactly. I don't, I don't think that's what they're there for. They're, they're, they're there to add the, those lower frequency ranges, but a very refined production of those frequency ranges. Which in that particular song is very present in the mix, anybody can listen to the song and understand that it will rattle your subwoofer. In the worst of cases, it'll overpower all other frequencies, where you basically get a wash of these subwoofer generated tones that you can no longer hear the airiness of the vocals or anything else in the mix. It just overpowers. But this playback did none of that. Right. It so added an element. So the rail was able to keep up with canters yes. and they were able to produce that lower bass with a lot of definition. Definition and presence without overpowering the rest of the mix.